17. The last time I had preached, I preached the same sermon twice over, and that was about forgiveness, and I used Luke 17, verse 3. And But I thought I would preach, uh, uh, it's, it's not the same subject as forgiveness, but it is um, uh, concerning the same situation. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of rekindled my uh, flame about starting a home for girls. And I was intentionally going to call it the Starla Home for Girls. And um, so that's still on the back burner. Did David build the temple? I thought about that this morning. Did David build a temple? He did not. Did David want to? Yes. All right, so just because I want to doesn't mean I'll be the builder. So it could be the next generation that does this. Uh, maybe uh, the Lord did not see it uh, fit for him to build a temple. Why was, it, why was David not fit to build the temple? He was a man of blood. He shed much. He, he was a man of blood because of the wars with the with whom? The ma yeah, mainly with whom though I would say. The, I would say mainly the Philistines. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I might not be the one to uh, start the uh, home for girls. I don't know. Uh, we did look at the Blue Castle in town when that came up for sale. Uh, the wife and I, uh, some of my kids went over, we went through the house, it was for sale. It wasn't near what it was cracked up to be, I was kind of shocked. I wanted to make that the home for girls. Uh, were we in a financial position to do that? No. Uh, and we may never be in a financial position to do that. Is God in a financial position to do that? Always. God is always in a financial position to do that. Uh, the, the object of this sermon is to persuade you of your responsibility to oversee a child. Uh, some of us have more of a responsibility than others. Uh, you may do it at a distance, and it may be advisable to do that at a distance. But uh, we cannot uh, underestimate the value of children. And uh, <clears throat> we, my wife and I have lost, when I say we have lost, we have lost the last five months of our life. The end of, uh, the end of spring, all summer long, all summer, and half of fall has uh, been lost. And I may say lost, the, the Lord... I say lost. The Lord may say, no, it's been very productive. And so we count that as, uh, as the Lord would know best. The Bible says this, to warn them that are unruly. It says, comfort the feeble-minded. So we're talking about church. I, apparently there would be unruly people in church. I'm to warn them. Comfort the feeble-minded. There are people who are feeble-minded. And they need to be comforted. They can't help it, folks. There are those, it says, support the weak. Are children weak? And generally speaking, they're weak. Physically weak, spiritually weak. And so I'm to support them. Uh, we are to do that. It says, patient toward all men. Not some men, all men. <coughs> we are to... <coughs> to do that, we're going to get started here in preaching. That's a little bit of a warm up. I said I have preached about this already twice on forgiveness and all. And uh, over these last five months, I have been asked to quit, uh, asked to surrender, asked to uh, let go. Uh, I have been, I've been told all kinds of things. And uh, I would say it was two or three summers ago we lost because uh, that, that summer slipped by because of a mechanical uh, debacle at our house. 
and I had gotten the county engineer involved, so the chief engineer had come out and he said to me, uh, after I raised all my complaints, and they were very supportive and they were gonna go to bat for us, and he said, uh, you don't seem the type to uh, quit. Uh, that you seem the type that you're going to go forward and, and follow this whole thing through. And we did. And it was uh, good for us. We followed it all the way through. And I intend, I, I have every anticipation of seeing this to the end. I'm not a quitter. And I can be tempted to be, to be a quitter. Very, very tempted. Uh, especially when you have those whispering in your ear to do that. But I am not a quitter. I'm not going to quit. We're going forward and we've had a lot of victories and we plan to get some more. Uh, and this is to persuade you in, uh, in the care of those that are weaker. Uh, Luke 17 verse 2, I may have written down Matthew 18 verse 6. It is the same verse Matthew 18, verse 6. So I have written it down in my Bible. If I read it, and I will read this aloud, it may be the quote out of Matthew 18, verse 6. It's, it's identical. And it may not be identical word for word. Father, bless our preaching. Uh, help us, Father, in our burden for those that are in need, for us to fight for them spiritually and to support them and to help them along the way now. In Christ's name I pray, amen. I've entitled this, These Little Ones. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. These little ones. These little ones, they are disciples of Christ. They may be young in years, or they may be weak in the faith. And they are esteemed little by the proud ones of this earth. They are, however, among the great ones in the kingdom of heaven. As it is written, I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And why is that printed? And why does it say that? It, he will turn his hand upon the little ones for protection. To protect them. All believers are as little children until they have matured into men. They're called little children in 1 John 1.12. And it, 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 not, not necessarily meaning of their physical age. They could be just new in the Lord. They could be older, yet new in the Lord. All believers are as little children until they have matured into men. Little children, they are described in 1 John 1, 12. They are called fathers and young men in 1 John 1, 13. They are described as newborn babes in 1 Peter 2, 2. They are as babes in Christ in 1 Corinthians 3, 1. As those who are not of full age in Hebrews 5, 14. Admittance into the kingdom of heaven of any and all real converts. Any and all real converts in any age is dependent upon the humbleness of the heart. Amen. The only way in is to become, as the Bible says, as a little child. And those that would offend one of these little ones are proud at best, thinking they are better than. We as Christians sometimes get to that self-righteous better than. Such a verse as this today was brought about by the disciples who came unto Jesus saying, this is what they said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It is a most prideful question. It is a lesson all need to learn or at the least be reminded of. The word of God says, for who hath despised the day of small things? Children are small things. Didn't a child initiate the healing of Naaman? 
Didn't a child save Paul from being murdered? Didn't a child elude Herod's wrath, that means Jesus? Did he confound the doctors of the law and begin the very calendar upon his birth? Was started by Jesus as a child. Upon the death of a baby and the life of another, it manifested the wisdom of Solomon before the ancient world. <coughs> the cry of the baby Moses. Just the literal cry of the baby Moses was the beginning of the deliverance of the nation of Israel. Without that baby crying, they would not have been delivered. A child's lunch fed 5,000 men. Low children are an heritage of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. They are an heritage of the Lord. Heritage that is something other than property passed down. It's not like passing down my, my land or, or the uh, house it's, or possession. Something other than property passed down. It is a legacy. That's something that's passed down from preceding generations. And that heritage is children. I won't tell you what to do with your heritage if you don't tell me what to do with my heritage. <laughs> Amen? Is it a deal? Is it a deal? Most people forget they were a child. Most people forget that. They forget what it was like. They forget how foolish they were and the foolish things they do. They forget that. They forgetteth what manner of man he was. They tend to forget those things. <coughs> now you mothers, I will warn you of this. A child pulls on a mother's apron strings when he is young. When they're in the kitchen, they pull on your apron strings. And when he is grown, he pulls on a mother's heart strings. That's what a child's going to do. Now I'll read it again. A child pulls on a mother's apron strings when he is young. And when he is grown, he pulls on a mother's heart strings. And it can be very heart-wrenching. Young mother, aren't you concerned about such a warning? Yet a loving mother will still respond. She'll still respond, but I still want a baby and I still want a child. Even though the warning is given. Wasn't Benjamin Jacob's child of his latter years, a child of his old age, a little one? That's how it states it. A child of his old age, a little one. Blessings that are long withheld are more intensely prized. This, this particular blessing, this particular son was long withheld. And he was intensely prized. What was said of John the Baptist? What manner of child shall this be? Was asked. While some have their futures revealed, and his future was revealed, most all others have their future hidden. Your future and mine, other than glory bound, our futures are hidden. And in mercy to parents and friends, that veil is not lifted. Because if the veil was lifted and you saw the future of your children, you would be horrified by that. May all those involved with these little ones say with all confidence, as was said to Paul, we need to say this, as the will of the Lord be done. <coughs> Whatever it may be, the will of the Lord be done. I mean, if I got what I wanted, I probably at one time wanted to be the President of the United States. I probably wanted to be an astronaut. I probably wanted all kinds of things. The last thing on my mind was to be where I'm standing right now. And if you were to tell my English teachers I would be behind the pulpit preaching, writing and preaching and speaking they probably laugh out loud. 
Our Lord knows what it is like to be a child, for he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. <clears throat> he is called literally the child Jesus. A child, so he would know what it is like, so he may plead on a child's behalf. Our parents concerned for their children's well-being. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man. Sure, parents are concerned about a child's, their own children's well-being. When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic. A lunatic, like Luna Moth. Luna, what does Luna mean? Moon. moon. You know, uh, he's, he's vexed by the full moon, you know, a lunatic. And sore vexed, it says, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I ask, does Jesus care about that? Yes, and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Amen. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. That's what Jesus called his disciples. Christ knew in a little while his disciples would be left without him. Nothing can be more frightening for a child than to lose their parents. Every good parent has such thoughts. That they won't be there one day to help their children. You know, why do you raise your children? Why do you raise them? So that one day what? They're, they're going to fly the coop, folks. They'll be out there on their own. And you let the leash out a little more. Every year they get a little older, the leash is let out a little more because one day that leash is going to be severed and they're going to be out on their own. Christ knew in a little while his disciples would be left without him. And every good parent has such thoughts that they're going to venture out. They won't be there one day to help their children. They won't be there. Uh, we had, uh, uh, my wife, myself, and, and Starla, we drove up to Madison, uh, I'd say about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we drove up there. We had to go up there for a reason, and we went past uh, Fairport Harbor. Anybody ever been out to Fairport Harbor? Uh, ever been out there to fish, though? There is a pier there. It's probably a mile walk out on that pier to the lighthouse. And we would go out to the lighthouses. I, I was driving at the time. I was old enough to drive. I, I had my own car when I was 17. We would drive out there in the convertible. It was a convertible. I had a Chevelle convertible. We would drive out there. We would go over these enormous, huge blocks of, of uh, quarry stone. Just gigantic, and the lake was down there, uh, folks. If I fell that fell in there, what would have happened to me? I would have been famous. I would have been on on, on what? I would have been on Channel Eight because uh, you know a uh, young man drowned in Lake Erie. But if my parents knew I was crawling over those rocks, they probably would have been crawling all over me. <clears throat> because one day we're going to have to let go. And every good parents have these kind of thoughts. They won't be there one day to help their children. So Christ refers to his disciples as little children. Little children as words of endearment, expressing not only his brotherly but fatherly love for his own. You know, I'll call my grandchildren, you know, my, my dear ones. Or, uh, you know, I'll call Starla lately baby. Baby. She may not like it, but I do it anyway. We are, as Christians, referred to as the children of God. We're not the adults of God. We are the children of God. As if our names are written in the heart of God. Whether you have one child 
or a dozen children. They're written in your hearts, are they not? Every parent has their children at any age written in their heart. While ye have light, Bible says, while ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. As children rely upon their parents, <coughs> as a child relies upon his mother, we are to rely and depend upon the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ, so that we are children of the light. We are the children. <coughs> and upon Christ we rely and trust. Amen. These little ones. Can children be wicked? Folks, three doors down from us, there was a, a, a boy and a girl that were raised by a mother and a father in there. And any wicked thing you can think of right now, we're talking about in the 50s, folks. Any wicked thing you can think of, they were. Think of any wicked thing. Let your mind go all the way. They were. It was around in the 50s. It was around in 1900. It was around in 1850. It was around in 1750. It was around in 1650. It's always been there. Can they be wicked? Children of this world. They are referred to as the children of disobedience, influenced not by the light of the world, but by the power of darkness. They become like the one that trains them as a teacher of lies. As is written, there shall be false teachers among you. The men, <clears throat> I don't care what the government says. I don't care what all the... Yet the politicians say it on either, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, they say it on both sides of the aisle. The men of Sodom were wicked. That's what the Bible says. The men of Sodom were wicked. No matter how much the Republicans and the Democrats embrace it. And why do they embrace it? You know, it's legal now by law. Why do they embrace it? You get another vote, folks. The men of Sodom were wicked. No matter what the politically correct say. There is the counsel of the wicked. They counsel. There is the path of the wicked. The way of the wicked is as darkness, which marks the devil's kingdom. That of darkness. In, in Genesis 19, they do wicked. Deuteronomy 9, 9, 9, they do wickedly in the sight of the Lord. <coughs> the wicked have some strange teachers. The wicked have some strange teachers, and their teachers can be in their own house. His mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Mothers teach their own children to do wickedly. <clears throat> there are those who would take a child and defile him, and such teachers will be held accountable. And as it were, with a millstone, of, as our text says, with a millstone about the net cast into the sea. Rest assured, the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. These little ones are described as a tender plant. Thine heart was tender as the bud of the tender herb. Even what it says about Rehoboam. We, listen, we don't have good thoughts about Rehoboam. But even Rehoboam was at one time very impressionable. What it says about him. Rehoboam was young and tender hearted. Like a child that is in school. Uh, folks, we've all been in school. Why do people homeschool, by the way? Why do they do it? It's a fad? I'll tell you why rich people do it. They're sailing around the world. And we don't want our vacation messed up, so we put them on the sailboat, they sail around the world, and they, they, bring, the, uh, they bring the teacher with it. They bring, what do you call that? The, uh, a tutor. 
another word for it. Uh, in the estate, they bring it on the, uh, yeah. the governance. They bring the governance with them. But you and I aren't rich. We homeschool to keep them out of that filthy, dirty public school. When I was there, and when I was in junior high, we had an English teacher that she was a tramp. And she got fired for it. We had a science teacher that was a drunk. He got fired for it. We had a sociology teacher in high school. He was a nut. He was a nutcase. And he was obsessed with the murder that happened in uh, Bay Village. What was that guy? Yeah. Shepherd. He was obsessed with that. In our, our, our government teacher, I don't remember his name, let just two words to describe him. He was bad news. And that's what's training these children. It was uh, maybe 10 years ago, the uh, 10 years ago, could it be about 10 years ago, uh, maybe eight years ago, up here at the uh, public school, the grade school, there was a, uh, a, a uh, I won't even mention the word that a uh, kid was doing to other kids. In My daughter pulled the kids out of there. And when you have young, as I said, thine heart was tender. They are like a tender herb. These little ones are as a tender plant. Children find it hard to withstand an onslaught of evil. When they're around that, and they're a tender young plant, they find it hard to withstand an onslaught of evil. Even when they're exposed to that, even for one week, they'll flip like a fish out of water. They cannot withstand it. That's why when they are producing these kids, they're already perverted. I uh, approached the school district. I asked the uh, super. I, I went. You know, I, I didn't go to this teacher. I went to the superintendent. I said, "Do you do public? Uh, do you do uh, corporal punishment in this school system, folks? This is this is not quite forty years ago. Thirty-five years ago. Um, this was his response." Yes. What was? Did we ever spank anybody? Right here? Well, right there. I said, "Well, you've answered my question. We're out of here. We're out of here." Dave and I, we went to school with a National Motorcycle Club. Bedford was the local chapter. It was the local chapter. It sounded. You know what? One of one of the gang leaders told me. I was friends with him. He said, "Boy, it sounds like a church group." The local chapter. By the way, is it against the law to spank your children? It is not against the law to spank your children. We had classes. We were forced to take classes. And the county told us up front to our face, we are not the spanking police. But we never did it in front of people. I, if it was in the restaurant, I took them to the bathroom. And are there cameras everywhere now? If it ain't there, I take them to the car. When we were done, when we were Roman Catholic, and they messed up. I would take them from the back seat to the front seat, and we would have a meet. And we did it upright. It is not against the law. But I wouldn't do it, man. There's cameras everywhere. Do it privately, not public. The day of Pentecost was fully come. And the offer of salvation is made to old and young alike, and to all those that follow throughout history. For the promise is unto you and to your children. That's what it says. On the day of Pentecost, the promise is unto you and to your children. 
Good men desire the goodness of God for their children. My wife and I became saved, and our desire first off was to get our children saved. Amen. Yet bad men desire bad things upon themselves and their children, when, especially whenever Christ is the issue. As they said, his blood be upon us and on our children. <clears throat> what, little ch what little concern for their own children when announcing such a curse. They announce that, that curse on their own kids. Yet there are those that come to Christ. And they are not offended by the cross. They find Christ to be altogether beautiful and have made him the savior of their soul. And upon such belief, bear upon their soul the divine likeness. You get saved, you got the divine likeness. In other words, I am related to him. And as a child, <clears throat> and as a child they become the favorites of heaven. And as a child, they aim high. They are holy in practice and are happier in heart. Amen. Aren't your own children? I mean, I would like to think my children are not your favorite children. Your children are your favorite children. And your children are not my favorite children. My children are my favorite children. And God's children, if you're a child of God, we are his favorite child. What's the easiest way to end a conversation? I'll just throw this in just for fun. You want to end a conversation? Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is what's said of prayer. A parable is given. Now listen to the parable. Which of you shall have a friend? We know the parable. All of us here know the parable. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. When we pray, we are praying, are we praying to, for, to somebody down here? Where, where we, where's our prayer directed? Up to heaven. So if that's the case, it describes heaven. It has a door. It, it mentioned the door is now shut. Jesus is the door. It has a door. And we are God's children. And we are, as it were, in bed where we have eternal rest and peace awaiting us. What else could it be? The parable can't mean anything else. And to have the, uh, getting back to the prayer, to, you know, it's knocked three times. He, can, he keeps knocking until his prayer is heard. But what else could it mean? The children are there and they're in bed. We have eternal rest there once we get there. Amen. These little ones, how should they be treated? I'll tell you how, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, Jesus says. As a hen doth gather her brood under her wings. Often the parent par perils their own life for the safety of their children. Don't parents do that? They peril their own life for the safety of their children. And isn't this what Christ did? He periled his own life to save the lives of his future brood. So the peril of the cross was for the protection of the church. You know, I got a relative <coughs> that uh, uh, just came to me. Got a relative, uh, I'll ask him, I said, well, what, what have you been doing lately? What have you been doing lately? I, I rarely see him. What have you been doing lately? He said, as little as possible. Folks, if that's your philosophy, 
That's not a philosophy. That's a fool philosophy. Ask me, what have I been doing? As much as I can do, amen. I know it's said as a joke, but I'm not laughing. It is written, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. By, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant, that's Jesus is the servant, he will justify many by saving them. He who protects these little ones are likened unto having wings. I memorized this when my wife was pronounced dead. The, 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 the day that they told me my wife died. And they brought her back, amen. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. We are like you, you protect little ones like, like, like the hen with her brood, like, like an unto heaven wings. Suffer little children to come unto me. In other words, allow the little children to come unto me. All men, <clears throat> all men at the least, all kind men would receive a child. Uh, in that silent, I had to write this down, in that silent movie, they did quote that. He, he, he was a kind man. And right after that, they say, the mean kind. <laughs> he was a kind man, the mean kind. But all men at the least, all kind men would receive a child. A child has nothing. What does a child really have? Even their own bed isn't their bed. You supply it. Their own clothes generally are not their clothes. You supplied it. A child has nothing and is in need of everything. What a privilege to minister to one then of these little ones. All carry the same weights. All children do. They carry the same sin, the same soul in need of salvation. <clears throat> all are equal. We are all to stand before God. All of us. Who is to stand? Stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp. See, even the children are to stand. Some children are solitary souls. It's a solitary soul, just thrown out there like to the wolves. A solitary soul. But God setteth the solitary in families. And no better family than the family of God. Amen? Don't worry, we're on the last page. Second to last page. We are the children of God. Born from above. Bound for glory. And God owns believers as his family. He owns them. Should I say more? Need more be said to persuade you the responsibility to oversee a child? You've got your own children. You've got, you got a boatload to oversee. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. There are those that go about to offend them. These little ones, they are disciples of Christ. They, they may be young in years, and they may be weak in the faith. They are esteemed little, though, by the proud ones of this earth. 
They are, however, among the great ones in the kingdom of heaven, as it is written, I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Why? To protect them. It is your job and my job to protect them. Not to take over God's job, but, but folks, we, we need not offend them. I hope your heart today is turned towards these little ones. Folks, I'm not quitting. I was tempted to throw the towel. But temptation passed. Again, I say I hope your heart today is turned towards these little ones. Best regards in Jesus Christ. Amen. Your best.